Copyright in these lectures is either owned by the ANU or a third party who has licensed the ANU to use it. Students may use the recording for personal study only. No lecture may be communicated online, copied or shared without the prior permission of the ANU. Uh, so my name is Mas, and I'll be teaching a workshop uh, for this semester, okay? And I'll be teaching you some of the tutorials as well. So the whole idea of we having this workshop is kind of applying the knowledge we learned from Monday's lecture into solving some problems, all right? So it's all about doing stuff. So hands-on solving problems. So if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. You know, if you have any questions from your homework or maybe from the book chapters, just interrupt me, okay? All right, so as uh, the first week workshop, we will focus on how to use derivatives contract to hedge our risk exposure. All right? So remember, as Steve mentioned on Monday, that 90% of the derivative trading is done by speculators, right? And remaining ones is done either by hedgers or arbitragers. So despite so many derivative trading is done by speculators, we should not forget the derivative product was first invented a lot of farmers to hedge their risk, right? Do you have any questions? Okay, all good? Okay, cool. Right, so let's think about why people hedge in the first place. So let's think about the motivation of using derivatives contract to hedge. So in the context of Australia, we have a lot of mining companies, right? So just imagine yourself as maybe the CEO or CFO of a gold miner in Western Australia. And your main business is to do gold exploration and dig the gold out of the ground, refine it to the standard that can be sold in the international market. Right? So what could be your kind of uh, worry if you're the CEO or CFO of the gold miners? What can keep you awake middle of the night? Sorry? Exactly, the gold price plunge, right? By the time the gold dug out the ground, properly refined, then the gold price plunged. And that can keep you awake middle of the night. So if you're some sort of farm manager in Sydney, let's say you have billions of dollars as on the management, what can keep you awake middle of the night? What, what would you worry about? You're worried the market might crash next day when you wake up, right? So if you borrow money, you worry about interest rate could go up. If you are uh, importing or exporting, you worry that the foreign exchange rate can move against you. So pretty much in all aspects of business, we expose some sort of uncertainty. So that led to the decision of using derivative contract to hedge. So that's the motivation behind hedging. All right, so uh, let's now talk about the basic principles of hedging, the basic ideas behind the hedging. So in a nutshell, is that, okay, we understand we have some sort of exposure to something, right? We have some exposure to some uncertainty. It would be nice if we can enter into a derivatives contract that providing this offsetting payoff which would shield us from those uncertainties, right? So that's the whole basic idea uh, behind hedging. But sometimes it can be a bit tricky to figure out, uh, you know, which position to enter into. So I come up with this two-step procedure for you guys to follow, all right? Step number one, identify your risk exposure. In plain language, what are you worried about? You know, what kept you awake middle of the night? If I'm a gold miner, I worry the gold price will decline. So that's my risk, risk exposure. The step number two is to enter into a derivative position that would make money when gold price falls. Okay? So in that sense, it's kind of creating this offsetting payoff, which largely removes our risk exposure. Right? So that's step number two. And you will see me following this two step quite closely in today's example, as well as in my tutorials. Even when the situation is quite obvious, I would still use this two-step because I want you guys to have this mindset to think about the question through this two-step. Because regardless how complicated the situation is, it's always falling into that two-step, all right? So let's jump right into our first you know, um, example today. So just imagine I own a construction business, and my construction business build the roads and the highway. And I have just been awarded a contract to build a highway in China. 
It's a long-term project. It's a long-term construction project. All right? And this road due to be complete in the second half of 2019. If you have ever seen the process of road building, you know there's a lot of uh, preparation work involved, right? We need to get all the big machinery in. We need to move all the dirt. We need to make the base of the road. Towards the very end of this project, what needs to be done to finalize the road? Have you ever seen like the road building? What needs to be done towards the very end to finalize this road? Any idea? There's this black sticky stuff that you lay on the surface of the road, right? Right? So in the bitumen, you need this black sticky material to lay on the surface of the road to finalize this, uh, to finalize this uh, road project. Okay? But the problem is, we don't need bitumen until the second half of 2019. Right? We don't need it until the very end of 2019. So let's, let's assume we need a bitumen about, uh, in September next year, so precisely 12 months away from today. Right? So if we look at the current price, the price of bitumen today, the spot price, so when I say today's price, I mean spot price, is 3,000 RMB per ton. Well, I quite like this price, 3,000 RMB, you know. The reason why I was awarded this contract is because the Chinese company liked my quote. And I did all my you know, construction cost calculation based on that spot price today. And I sent them my quote, and they liked my quote, they gave me the contract. I'm happy about it. But the problem is, I don't know what the bitumen price will be in 12 months' time, right? So as, as the CEO of the company, that can keep me awake middle of the night. That's my worry. So we kind of already identified our risk exposure just by reading this question. We worry that the bitumen price would rise. You know, if it rise to 5,000 RMB per ton, given we have a big volume, 500 tons, that can put us out of the business. That's, that's a real worry. So is there any kind of derivative product allow us to hedge this sort of risk exposure? Where on earth can I find a derivative product which can help me to hedge the bitumen price increase? Well, with a bit of investigation, I uh, stumbled upon this article, so I'll quickly show you guys. So I just found this article online, and What it says is, world's first bitumen futures make strong debut in Shanghai. The world's first future in road paving material bitumen generated strong, strong investor interest after launching Shanghai Futures Exchange. I think that's my answer, right? Perhaps we should jump over to Shanghai Futures Exchange website to have a look whether they offer the bitumen futures contract that we needed. So here we go. So we see this uh, Shanghai Futures Exchange offer a range of uh, you know, futures contracts on different online assets. So we have uh, copper, we have aluminum, we have zinc, we have lead. I think this is nickel. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, rubber. So we have gold, silver, steel rebar. And all the way down here, we have BU, bitumen futures contract. That's what we need to hedge. All right, so we're entering here, and we see there is a, a range of contract information, and we, we see this code, futures contract code. So BU means this is a future, uh, sorry, this is a bitumen futures contract, right? And this four digit number, this four digit number uh, is the expiry date. So for instance, this one means the contract will expire on December 2018, so end of this year. Okay, so remember my, my road uh, project due to be complete in the second half of 2016. So let's say we need about September, right? So perhaps this is the contract we need, right? BU 1909. So this contract will expire on um, 16th of September next year. Suits my needs. Right, so before we actually enter our order, how about we 
look into the contract specification to have a look what is the underlying asset this contract is covering. So if we click into that, we we'll see this contract spec. It's pretty specific. It says bitumen, and it has a standardized contract size. So every contract covers 10 tons of bitumen. So that is the underlying asset we're trading per contract. All right? And there's a lot of information about the quality of the bitumen. You know, it tells me the quality of the bitumen. And also, if you want, we can actually take the physical delivery. You also tell us which warehouse to go to in Shanghai, probably somewhere in Shanghai. And here it says the minimum trade margin, 4% of the contract value. So this minimum trade margin um, is the initial deposit. You have to lodge with the exchange. So that's your initial margin, all right? So it's very detailed information. But all we need to know is this contract size, 10 tons per contract. All right, that's the underlying assets we're trading. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Uh, yeah, so I will upload the slides after we finish today's workshop. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that next time. I'll upload, yeah, next time. Sorry about that. It's very straightforward today, so you don't need to look at your slides. We're just going to talk through, all right? Okay, so, um, yeah, remember, two-step procedure. First, we identified that we're worried that the bitumen price will increase in the future. That's our worry, and we find the right two to hedge it, which is the bitumen futures contract. Now, it's just a matter of deciding, entering into whether we should enter into a long or short futures position, right? Remember, step number two is about making money when the unfavorable scenario occurs, when the worst nightmare occurs. So in this case, which position should we enter into, long or short? Let's go back to the profit diagram of futures contract, right? So this is a long position, this is short position. So it's quite obvious in this case, we should take a long position, right? Because as we can see, for, for the you know, loan position, the value of the future increases as the price of the underlying assets increases. In other words, when the bitumen price increases, the value of our futures contract increases. And that provides an offsetting payoff that can largely remove the risk, risk exposure we were exposed to. All right, so the answer is... So the answer is we should take a loan futures position and textbook calls a loan hedge, all right? So remember, back to the contract spec, it says 10, 10 tons per contract. And based on my prior experience for this road building exercise, we need about 500 tons of bitumen. So 500 divided by 10, we need 50 futures contract, right? Straightforward. And also we see that uh, Shanghai Futures Exchange offer a range of expiry dates. So just going back here. So we're probably gonna take a long position in this BU 1909, right? So it expires on 16th of September, and that's when we need the bitumen to lay on the road. Okay. And we see that BU 1909 has a delivery price, so just let me go back again, has delivery price of 3,246 RMB per ton, okay? So we're gonna loan 50 contracts of BU 1909 at a price, at a delivery price of 3,246. So we'll just jump on our computer, we'll enter the order, and a couple of seconds later, exchange tell me it's done, right? So moments my order get executed, I'm kind of locking to this price, 3,246 RMB per ton. Yeah, straightforward. So, okay, so the moment I entered those 50 loan futures contracts, I know exactly how much I should be paying for the 500 tons of bitumen, right? So that's 3,246 multiplied by 10 contracts, sorry, multiplied by 50 contracts, then multiplied by 10 tons, so that's 1.623 million RMB. 
from a 500 tons of bitumen. Now can sleep tight during the night because I've locked in the price. And now I like to do two scenarios. So in the first scenario, fast forward 12 months, the bitumen price indeed increased. You know, we rise to 4,000 RMB per ton. If indeed that's the case, we should be really glad we actually did hedge, right? Otherwise, this can put us out of the business. So fast forward 12 months and bitumen price increased to 4,000 RMB. And there are two options here. I can either take the physical delivery, which is the real, real stuff, the real black sticky bitumen, 500 tons, some warehouse in Shanghai I need to collect. Alternatively, I can close out my contract before it expires, right? Most people don't bother with physical delivery. You know, I don't bother with that because I live in an apartment, so I have nowhere to put it. So perhaps we're just going to close out our futures contract before it expires, right? Remember, going back to this slides again, so our contract expires on 16th of September. So perhaps what we can do is we can close out our contract 10 days before that. Let's say 6th of September, all right? All right, so on the 6th of September, how can I close out my futures contract? Remember, we enter into 50 loan. Sure, right? But how many? 50, right? Same quantity. And we should short the same contract, right? BU 1909. So there's one thing worth noting is that, well, the expiry date is approaching, the quoted future price on BU 1909 should equal to the spot price at the time. Remember, on Monday's lecture, Steve mentioned, if they are not equal, there could be a arbitrage opportunity, right? So if arbitrators see this opportunity, they will quickly arbitrage this away. So we should not expect uh, this arbitrage opportunity to, to be long. So, okay, so on the 6th of September, I short 50 BO 1909 contract. What would be the pay? What would be the profit loss? Our futures position. Remember, we loan at a price of 3,400. Uh, three, sorry, 3,246. So loan means buy, right? We bought at this price. Now we sold the same contract, same quantity, at a price of 4,000 RMB. Right? So this is the price we sold. So roughly we make a profit of 754 RMB per ton, right? So that multiplied by 500 tons and give us a handsome profit of 377,000 RMB. Okay, so after I enter my 50 short uh, order, and this 377,000 RMB profits would shortly be sitting in my bank accounts. But we shouldn't get too excited about this. Right? Why we shouldn't get too excited about this profit? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we still got to do our real business. We still have to buy the real bitumen in the real world to do our business, right? And we have to pay whatever the spot price at the time, which is 4,000 RMB. So I like to think of this as like a dual reality, you know. One reality is what's going on in the futures position. In this case, we made a decent gain. 377,000 RMB. But in the real reality, the reality we have to do our normal business, I still need to go to my normal suppliers to buy the 500 tons of bitumen and pay the spot price. Spot price at that time, which is 4,000 RMB, all right? So in other words, uh, 500 tons multiplied by 4,000 RMB, I'm paying 2 million RMBs for the 500 tons of bitumen in September next year. 
Do you guys have any questions? No? Okay. So even without calculating my net cost, I should know the net cost dividing uh, 50 contracts should end up with 3,246. Right? Because the moment I enter those 50 loan uh, futures contracts, I've locked in that price. Okay? So let's double check whether this is the case. Okay, so this is the price we realized in the spot market in September 2019, which is 2 million RMB. And this is the gain we had in our futures position. 377,000 RMB. So the net cost comes down to 1.623 million RMB. All right? And that figure divided by 500 times, and that comes down to 3,246 RMB per ton. So going back to the slides, remember we entered our loan contract, sorry, we entered our loan contract at this price, right? And the net cost comes down to the same price. So we're locking that price. All right, so that's situation number one. Let's think about another situation. Uh, we can, but um, you know, if we physically take the bitumen uh, at the warehouse in Shanghai, we have to immediately kind of sell it at the price, at the 4,000 RMB. Otherwise, you're still exposed to the price movements. So that's why most of the traders don't bother to take the physical delivery. But if, I mean, you, you can, you can take the physical delivery. Let's assume you can sell it immediately after you, you took the physical delivery. Oh, sorry. You can actually use that for building the roads, right? But you still need to, you still need to transport that, that bitumen from the warehouse in Shanghai to your construction sites. That might incur some other costs. So it's more convenient in the sense you go to your normal supplier, maybe near the construction sites, and deliver the, the, the bitumen. But yes, you can, but the, the net cost will be the same if you take the physical delivery, okay? But for the convenience, for the convention, you know, most traders, they just close out. We're going to do the same. We're just going to close out. Uh, we're going to pay for the delivery. We're going to pay for the delivery, okay? Because the, uh, whoever writes the futures contract tells you where to pick it up, and, and their contract, we, we finish the contract at that point. Therefore, you have to figure out how to transport that bitumen to the construction sites. All right. So, any other questions before we? Um, when you cancel out of the contract, what happens to the bitumen then? Is it someone else? Yeah. Into the contract, or? Yeah, someone else will enter into the contract. Someone else will enter into the contract. That's right. Any other questions? So this is like the dual reality, right? So in one reality, we realize the game, our futures position. In another reality, we just go to our normal suppliers to buy our normal bitumen and do our uh, real business. But the net effect would be the same if we, take, if we physically take the delivery of the bitumen in some warehouse in Shanghai, okay? Are we cool with this? Can we move on? Okay, so let's have a look what's gonna happen if the price uh, declines. Okay, fast forward 12 months. Let's, let's assume the bitumen price declined to 2,000 RMB per ton. Okay, again, I'm, I'm just gonna do what most hedgers do. I'm just gonna close out the contract before it expires. So it expires on, uh, remember, 16th of September. So again, this time, on 6th of September, 10 days before it expires, I enter, uh, I enter into 50 short BO1909 contract. 
So same quantity, same contract. All right, so what would be the profit loss this time, our, our futures position? Remember, we took a loan position at a price of 3246 So that's the price we bought. And this is the price we realized. We sold, right? We're short. So we're making a loss, 1,246 per ton, right? So this time we're making a loss. And so that comes down to 623,000 RMB loss, our futures position. Remember, we, we entered into a loan position in the first place, so when the Bishman price falls, that would incur loss on futures position. But we shouldn't be upset about it. Why? Exactly. This time is really cheap. I'm really glad. So I go to my normal supplier as I say, only 2,000 RMB per ton, and I multiply by 500 tons. It only cost me 1 million RMB to buy the 500 tons of bitumen this time. All right? But the net cost is the same. Net cost is still 1 million RMB plus uh, the loss we had on our futures position, position 623,000 RMB. And the net cost is 1.623 uh, million RMB for 500 tons we purchased. That divided by 500 tons, it comes down to, again, 3,246 RMB per ton. So this is same, this is identical outcome to the previous scenario. Right? So that's the whole basics behind hedging. So we'll identify our risk exposure, we'll enter to the position that would make money when the unfavorable scenario occurs, all right? And our futures position provide offsetting payoff, you know? In that sense, it's kind of shield us from the uncertainty, the risk exposure we were exposed to. So any questions about the first example we just went through? Yeah, so remember we need Beachman in uh, late September. So, okay, going back to this uh, slides. So we need Beachman in September, right? So the contract will expire on 16th of September. Yeah. Now, if we don't close out our position before the states, we, we got to take the physical delivery. Uh, yeah. How will we show that on the 6th of September, the price of the futures uh, short will be 3,246 How will we show that on the 6th of September? Yeah. No, you will not be. So on, on the 6th of September, if you go short 50 uh, bitumen contract, the price, let's say in the, in, the, in the first scenario, when the price increased to 4,000 RMB, we're going we're gonna to short at a price of 4,000. Okay? So because at that time when we short this BO 1909 in September, it's really close to its expiry date. It's almost on its expiry date, right? Yeah. And the delivery price of that short uh, contract should roughly equal to the spot price, which is 4,000, yeah. which is fine. Because we bought, remember we bought, so going back here, we bought at a price of 3,246. 3, so we're making it again. Does it make sense to you? Okay, so let me Okay, so when the expiry date is approaching to 19th of September, sorry, 16th of September, uh, we're gonna close out before that day, and the quality of the price should roughly equal to the spot price, which is 4,000 RMB at that time. If it's, not, if it's not equal, then there will be an arbitrage opportunity here. Remember what we had on Monday's lecture? The arbitragers they love to arbitrage that away. The market is efficient. 
and then there's 4,000. So we loan loan means we bought at this price, short means we sold at this price, we made some game here. This is a good question, thank you. So any other questions we have? Yes, that's right. Yes. And in reality, it should equal to, roughly equal to 4,000 RMB, in reality. Because the market is very efficient. So there is some discussion going on here. So any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Here? Yeah, exactly. So if pat when it expired, you have no choice. You have to take the real delivery. So that's the that's the day range which you receive a notice from the exchange tell you where to pick it up. But we don't want that to happen, remember? We don't want to go to some warehouse in Shanghai to pick it up. Because at the end of the day we still gotta transport to my construction site. Perhaps somewhere, I don't know, somewhere remote. So you mean that you close off this contract very early, uh, nearly the expiration? Exactly, so yeah. So the price will close to the spot price. price at that time, which is 4,000 RMB. Sorry, I should make that clear. So we should choose the date. You know, I arbitrarily choose 6th of September, which is quite close to 16th of September. You can choose some other date just before the expiry date. Of course, it's a trading day then you take 50 short. You enter 50 short contract. So what is the exact definition about the delivery period? Delivery period. So the delivery period is the, is the period you would re receive a notice from exchange to pick up the physical goods. If you choose to physically, if you choose physical delivery. But in this case, we're not choosing the physical delivery, so you can pretty much ignore these two columns here. All right, so, okay, imagine, imagine in an alternative world, which we did not close out our contract, like that gentleman there said, we're gonna take the physical delivery, right? So we just, we sit there, we do nothing, contract expires, and between the 17th of September and 23rd of September, I, gonna, I, I will receive an email from the Shanghai Future Exchange. Tell me, you gotta go to Shanghai Port, some warehouse, and to, to pick it up 500 pounds. So that's what's going on between that period. But given we're not bothered with that, so you can just ignore these two columns. But we've got to watch out for this expir expiration date. Right. It's a very good question, yes? Uh, could be, but... Um, there, there could be the risk because remember we were trading pretty large volume, 50 contracts, 500 tons is pretty large. But um, yeah, so if we, yeah, you better check the trading volume. So to be honest, the trading out volume for the contract that we are shorting is pretty thinly traded. So the daily trading volume is only six contracts. Yes, we might run into the risk of not getting 50 short. Thank you for the, for the suggestion. So yes, so when you, when you choose the contract, you have to pick the contract with decent liquidity. So that's where the market liquidity comes in. So the, some of the popular contract like, uh, you know, end of eight, 2018, you know, December 2018, lots of trading volume. More than enough to cover our uh, 50 short. Uh, and also in June 2000, 2019, Decent trading volume there. But yes, the one we choose is a bit awkward. Uh, September 2019, only six contracts traded daily. But let's pretend we didn't see this, okay? Let's pretend we have enough trading volume and our order gets successfully executed. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for this suggestion. So yes, so when, you, uh, when you're entering into the contract, not only you have to consider 
the date that coincided with the date that you need the, the physical goods, but also you have to check the liquidity, right? If it's not very liquid, then on the 6th, on the 6th of September, when we enter our 50 sh short uh, order, it's going to sit there and nobody, no counterparty is going to take the other side. So it's going to be, it's going to be our problem, yes. Any other questions? It's a very good question, thank you. Okay. So I went through the second scenario, right? So when the price drops to 2,000 RMB, we're going to do the same thing. We will enter 50 shorts, uh, same contract view 1909, and before the expiration date, otherwise we, we, we will receive a notice from the Shanghai, future, Shanghai Futures Exchange to pick up the physical goods, which we don't want to. And the delivery price on um, BO1909 in September should roughly equal to the spot price, which is 2,000 RMB, and we're making a loss. But we shouldn't be upset because we still need to purchase the bitumen from our normal suppliers at a really cheap price, 2,000 RMB, which is 1 million RMB, right? So the net cost is 1.623 uh, RMB, again, for the 500 tons of bitumen. Yes? Uh, yes, we still need to worry about it because all the contracts we saw on the Shanghai Futures Exchange, uh, if you don't do anything before the delivery, uh, sorry, expiration date, you just automatically assume you wanted the physical stuff. Yeah. Then you don't have to worry about it. But all the contracts we we'll look at today, yes, it, it, it assumes you will have to take the physical delivery, yes. All right, so, so we still got uh, like 15 minutes, so I will go through the second example, or if you have more questions, we can, I can answer more questions. Second example is really straightforward. Do you want to go through the second example, or we have more discussion about this first example? Second example, okay. Very straightforward. So, Second example says, uh, if you're some staple of the company and you find that there's a cash shortage in the first quarter next year, all right? When you say cash shortage, you need to borrow money, right? So to finance this shortage, your firm issued uh, a 90-day bank accepted bill with face value of $1 million. So what is our risk exposure here? Remember two steps, identify your risk. Second step, enter into the derivative position that would make money. Yeah, interest rate would increase, right? Because that incur more interest expense. So that's your worry. All right, so very straightforward. We already identified that. And the question also tells us the December 90-day BAB futures contract is currently trading at a price of 92. So how can we shield us from the interest rate movements in this case? So identify the first step, which is where the interest rate would increase. Therefore, we need to enter into a futures position which makes money when interest rate increases. So by construction of this 90-day BAB futures contract, we should know the price will decrease when the implied interest rate increases, right? So at a price of 92, the implied interest rate is like 
right? So if interest rate increase to 9%, then this 90-day BAB future will be traded at $91. Right, so the value of our future contract decreases when the interest rate increases. And we want to make money when the interest rate increases. What should we do? We should enter long or short. We should short it, right? We should short precisely one December 90 day BAB futures contract. And in, in that case, we make money because we short. All right? Very straightforward, two scenarios. Scenario number one, yes, so that's just the, the logic process we went through. So we're going to sell one December 90-day BAB futures contract at a price of 92. Now imagine the interest rate turned out to be 10% per annum. All right, so the amount we receive will be 1 million face value discounting at this 10% interest rate. So give rise to this amount, right? 975,935. So this is equivalent of kind of receiving this 1 million uh, face value in December, but paying the interest up front, right? So that's the difference between 1 mil and this amount. So this is equivalent of paying an interest of $24,064. All right? But remember, we short, we, we, we sold, we sold one December 90-day BAD futures contract. Therefore, we ought to know that should make a gain, right? So let's, let's check. So the gain on the future position is $4,719. Uh, so that's the gain on our futures position because we enter into a short position. So what's the net cost? So the net cost comes down to 19,344. So if you double check, that's equivalent to the interest payment of 8%. So that's, that's the 8% we kind of locked in the moment we entered the short futures contract, right? Cool. Now, scenario number two. Suppose the December 90-day BAB interest rate increased to 6% per annum, sorry, decreased to 6% per annum, and this time we receive more money, right? So one million discounting at 6% give rise to this amount. So this is equivalent of paying an interest of 14,578. Okay, so we pay less uh, interest this time. But we shouldn't be too excited about it because we're making a loss in our futures position this time, right? So this time we're making a loss of 4,764 our futures position. And the net cost just come down to the same 19,344. So that's the interest, we, we interest expense we incurred plus the loss on our futures position. And again, it comes down to 19,344. Equivalent of interest payment at 8%. So we're locked into the 8% the moment we entered the short December 90 day BAB at a price of 92. Okay, so that's all for today's workshop. Any questions? It's quite strict. Yes? <coughs> Sorry, can you repeat? You mean uh, you can reinvest at the higher rate?
we can we can discuss after the workshop if you want to. Yeah. So all right, I think that's all for today's workshop. Thank you everyone. If you have any questions, you can come down to the front. Yep, for the assignment, yeah, I have the group. He's not in. He's not in. Yeah. I don't get any law part. Okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, I don't have a group. That's why I'm not here. All right. Um, do you do that as the thing? <laughs> I don't know. I've, it's the start of the semester, actually. Oh, do you use a lot of Excel and uh, do the modeling? Yeah, I'm fine with Excel. I've worked on Excel. Yeah. So you have worked before? Yeah, I've worked before. I've worked on Excel. So what's your business? About my business. Business? Yeah. Are you going? No, I just want to ask him a question. Yeah, well, I'll just, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, are you interested in your group? Yeah. Are you guys going to take my interview before I join your group? Is it going to be like a group interview, then personal interview? Yeah, group interview. So, are you able to We have some candidates. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, are you able to have a discussion? Yeah, of course. Uh, what day? I'm, I work on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Sunday morning? Um, oh, so your work fell? Yeah, it's yes. the weekend. Uh, Saturday, I'm working full day. Sunday, I'm working in the evening. So morning, I'm seeing the four five. Uh, what is the evening from like? Evening 5 to 10.30, I'm working. Oh, that's fine. Uh, you can come like... Before five. Oh, nine. Maybe we can do between nine to five. Yeah, whenever you guys are. So, what's your work time in Sunday? Five to ten thirty. Five. Five So you work all the Sunday. Yeah, Saturday all day. Yeah. And Friday also, I'm working all day. Today I am not. If you want to guys discuss today. Uh, so you, do you yes, work so in the work time from 1 to 5, from uh, Monday to Friday?
this week I am working on Friday, but from the next week I won't because we have lectures and 